when did you first see him, meet him, recruit him? Walk me through that process, Coach. Oh, gosh, Rich. It was a long time ago, man. Right. I'm getting old. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, obviously out of high school, coming from Ocean Township High School uh, in New Jersey. And, you know, we recruited him out of, out of obviously, high school. Uh, he wasn't a transfer portal guy or a grad transfer. Uh, he's a guy that we, we thought had a ton of talent, was uh, originally committed to Temple. And yep. we kind of – we beat Temple on him, North Carolina, and – uh, the Tar Heels came in late trying to get him. Uh, when we didn't have a quarterback coach or offense coordinator, we were able to hold on to him. And really, in his freshman year, um, you know, he played the last four games of the season, season out of need. Our starter got hurt. He was really a scout team quarterback, and we brought him up and started getting him reps because we knew he was the future. And uh, he ended up helping us in his only start the last game of the season against Miami, beating number two Miami at home here at Heinz Field. Give me a good story about his uh, demeanor and huddle, locker room, leadership. What do you got for me on that, Coach? Uh, Rich, he's, he's a phenomenal leader. He's been a two-time captain for us. And, and, and probably, you know, at the quarterback position, you know, you need a guy that's, you know, going to lead your football team. Uh, not only did he lead our offense, he led our football team. I mean, he was, he was the, the guy. Uh, I think that the offense and the defense fed off of his leadership. But, uh, you know, he was just a, you know, a guy that, you know, constantly, you know, uh, led this football team. It wasn't so many words, and I think sometimes, you know, he led by leadership. But uh, he, he's he's not a, a rah rah guy. He's a serious business type leader, and just a, you know, it takes just a few words. Nobody wants to hear a, you know a long speech out of a, a leader, especially you know especially uh, you know a player. Uh, they certainly don't want to hear it out of a coach. But you know, about every halftime this year, he got even better. You know, like his halftime deal was after I got done talking was, hey, whatever it takes. You know, whatever it takes to get it done, guys, let's get it done. And and, uh, and our, our team fed off of him. So you would speak and then he would speak at halftime? Yeah, at halftime. I mean, just right before we you know, would bring him up and break him down before we'd leave for, right. the, uh, for, you know, for the, the third quarter. Um, you know, I always just kind of got him all locked in. But then Kenny was going to get the last word in, which was awesome. Yeah, so not like some uh, Gene Hackman Hoosier speech, just a, a quick word before you go back on the field yeah, is what you're no saying. no doubt about it. Okay. And so um, let's let's get into um, everything, you know, <laughs> the main topic of discussion with him, which I'm sure for a defensive coach like you, a hard-nosed long-time coach like you, uh, the words hand size might just make your eyes roll. But that is the conversation. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm just walking through the front door here, but also understand how silly it might sound. But in the NFL, you know, you parse every single uh, inch or every eighth of an inch, like, you know, his hand size growing between the combine and his pro day. So right. what 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 can you tell me about that storyline oh here? You know, I, again, I think it is, you know, uh, something everybody's looking at, talking about as far as the media goes. But, Rich, there's not one NFL head coach, um, which we had a few of them at our pro day, uh, not one scout, uh, assistant coach, quarterback coach has mentioned one word about it. So I think it's all, uh, you know, you know, all hot topic, I guess. But, uh, you know, I've never, ever, you know, in, in five years coaching him, um, ever go, you know, God, you got small hands, man. You got to be able to hold on to the ball. It was never a topic. And, and it didn't become a topic because it was never an issue on game day. I mean, if he was a guy that fumbled the ball a lot, then you might go, hey, let me measure your hands. But uh, uh, I've, I've never noticed that. His, it really it comes down to, I think he's got a normal size hand, but, his, you know, he doesn't, his thumb doesn't always reach. Like, it doesn't stretch out, you know, uh, which I've never noticed. You know, again, five years with him, recruiting him, it was never something like, hey, there's something wrong. Maybe we need to, you know, get surgery on his thumb or something. I mean, it's uh, the guy's a phenomenal quarterback and and, uh, he's got ball skills and, um, again, just, you know, knows how to throw the football. Well, I guess it's just – Small hand or large hand, what what does it matter? Yeah, was like – the ball to the receiver. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) I don't mean to talk over you, but I I guess um, the the, the idea, though, is everything gets parsed out in the NFL – and that uh, you take a look at the history of the first round and quarterbacks at the position. Michael Vick was the last first-round draft choice who had a hand um, the same size as Kenny Pickett. And so it's been a long time because teams just think about that and just think about how uh, that might affect, certainly if you're in cold weather. But as you just mentioned, it's a 40-degree day on April 1st in Pittsburgh. So he's done this before. You've never at any point in time – Saw, saw something on the field or and again you're a defensive minded coach so you know what you can attack of an opponent's weakness if that is such a thing right. you never right. once saw uh, a moment where never he... never there's not one time and again i'm not just talking game days you know where you 
um, you know, where you, you know, you, you know, everybody sees it. Um, I'm talking practice, and you know, you know how many balls he's thrown in practice, and how many practices he had through his five-year career at Pitt. I mean, never once from his early days on scout team, never once did you go, why does he fumble the ball so much? He doesn't fumble the ball. Um, and uh, he doesn't put the ball on the ground, and uh, he knows the ball is the program and the team. And, and, uh, and again, he, that's not an issue. It's not an issue at all. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.